What's better than a good piece of meat to shove in your mouth? <laughs> Come on, we all knew that was coming. Smut! Skirt steak, this good? Should be illegal. Mm. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to cook two different parts of skirt steak. So, just sit right back, grab a drink or two, and let's get into it. And while you're there, subscribe, like, comment, all that sort of crap. Hate mail, I got a lot of hate mail last week. I love it. Send more. Skirt steak, what is it? Don't ask me, I'm not a butcher. So I asked Mick, my butcher out of Gippsland Premium Meats, and guess what? He threw these at me. He said, this is the inside skirt. It is the more common version and quite thick. Its muscle fibers are more coarse and therefore the end result will be a less tender bite. And this is the outside skirt steak. It is the more prized out of the two and a lot thinner. And as you can see, there are a lot more muscle fibers and the end result is gonna be a much more tender steak. Skirt steak, both the inner and outer come from the part of the cow we call the rib or the plate or the sternum. Now the thicker skirt steak is also known as flank steak. Both cuts are super beefy and have heaps of flavor, which makes them popular for tacos. Although we effectively have two different types of steaks, we're gonna prep them exactly the same way. Firstly, by gloving up. As always, hygiene is important. And then selecting your trimming knife. Now they do come with varying degrees of fat on them and that is your choice if you wanna remove it. These ones look pretty good on this side, but turning them over, we can see the silver skin on this thicker piece. And this has to be removed and you can easily get rid of it by sliding your trimming knife under it, angling it slightly upwards and pushing away from you. Silver skin left on your steak will create a chewy afterbite. Don't know about you, but that's not how I explain a good steak. So take your time and remove it all. It's time to oil up the meat and I suggest transferring it to a tray gonna help with cleanup and mess. Now I'm just gonna use some extra virgin olive oil and I'm just gonna lightly cover both pieces of steak. And then we're gonna flip them over and oil the other side. And now that our meat's all oiled up, it's time to rub one out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, what I meant was use some of this rub one out seasoning from Steph the Maori. Now this is his all purpose seasoning. And I tried it out on myself in the shower last night, and apparently, I taste great. I think that one was way too far. Still funny, still smart. How much you use is a personal preference. Just remember, cover them evenly, and flip them over. And apply the rub to both sides. And remember, apply the rub always about 30 centimeters above your food. This allows the particles in the rub shaker to separate before it hits your food, giving you a much more even flavor burst in your mouth. Seasoning your steaks is a personal preference. Salt and pepper can do just fine. I personally like to try new rubs on the market, and today, it was one of Steph the Maori's range. Today, I'm gonna be using my Weber Go Anywhere, or GA as they're known, and I'm gonna be setting it up as an abachi grill, so I can grill directly over high heat. So, I won't be needing the lid. I'm then gonna open the vents to allow as much airflow to our fuel as possible. I'm then gonna three quarter fill a chimney starter with lump charcoal. I'll then light up a couple of fire lighters and bang that on top. And then once it's fully alight, we're gonna tip it into the GA. And then using an old pair of tongs, we're just gonna spread it out so we get even heat throughout the entire cooking surface. Then put the grill back in place. Extreme heat is critical in this cook. Why? Because the steaks are thin, so we need to form that crust before we overcook them. Make sure you use a good quality lump charcoal. You spend a lot of money on your barbecue and your meat and your seasonings. So why skimp on the charcoal? It is effectively another ingredient in your cook. But, don't ask me what charcoal I'm using today. It's a secret for now. So now we just wanna get both the steaks on the grill. And just remember the thicker inside skirt steak is gonna take longer to cook than the thinner outside skirt steak. And just remember, we're gonna flip them roughly about every minute. 
And you want to keep a check on that internal temp regularly on both the stakes with an instant read thermometer. And once they reach an internal temp of 43 degrees Celsius, that's when I like to pull my meat off. Jeebus! That's smut of the smuttiest kind. Skirt steaks are best to be removed from the heat a little earlier than other steaks, purely because they're thinner and that carryover heat when resting can see that internal temp rise a little bit quicker. See, you're learning. This is science. Science while you drink. Cheers. Now when resting the steaks, the thicker inside skirt steak is gonna need a little longer to rest because it weighed in at 579 grams. Whereas the thinner outside skirt steak weighed in at only 298 grams. Now the general rule for resting meat is one minute per 100 grams. Now ideally, you could start cooking the thicker steak a little bit earlier, have them rest and finish at the same time, but a little bit more resting time's not gonna harm that thinner steak too much. Trust me, I'm a semi sort of professional white coat clipboard holding type of guy. Today, I'm cooking with a high direct heat. And all up, this cook's gonna take no longer than 10 minutes. Or for those of you who love to use my beer timer, you look at out a one beer cook. Cheers. We all know you're gonna start drinking before you cook this steak. So we may as well just call it an eight beer cook. Cheers. To cut up your steaks for optimal tenderness while eating them, you're first gonna to have to select your slicing implement. And then looking at which way the grain runs as both steaks are different. The thicker skirt steak, you can see the grain is running this way. So, we need to cut it across the grain like this. And then you can see the thinner skirt steak actually has the grains running across it. So what we need to do is cut it into sections. Then we can spin it around and we can slice it across the grain. And this will make the steak so much more tender while chewing. It'll just fall apart when you put it in your mouth. And you want to enjoy everything you put in your mouth. Smut! Cutting against the grain is a vital part of the cook. If you cut it with the grain, the fibres of the meat are going to be longer and each bite is going to be more chewy and you're just not going to enjoy it. 